So now let's talk about how you make use of these financial statements to better understanding to better understand how the business is doing, where there might be some issues that one wants to follow up on and make some changes, and also just think about how one needs to plan going forward, comparing yourself to other companies and prior performance and the like. That's what ratio analysis does. Once you have all of this information into your financial statements, you can start to look at how your relative performance is in each of the dimensions by comparing essentially one to the not one to another, and that's called ratio analysis. Comparing perhaps profit, how much profit you're getting to how much revenue you're getting gives you a percent. That would be your profit margin. And you can look at that and how that changes over time to see what your trends are. Um, other kinds of ratios might be how often you're able to uh, turn over, as we'll, we'll talk about in a few minutes, turn over your accounts receivable so that you have people owing you money, which is what receivables means, um, but how fast are they being paid off, essentially. You can look at those kinds of uh, operating events by comparing how the numbers look one to another. And that's what ratio analysis is all about. Whether numbers are good and bad, but good or bad, really depends upon how they compare to one another and how your ratios might compare to your compare to peers. And so that's what we'll look at. The first ones to consider, and probably the most important, at least um, in terms of identifying uh, real situations that are relevant at the moment or immediately, are profitability ratios. And what this means is. You have a, you're running a business, so what you're trying to do is make a profit so that the money that's coming in is enough to pay for all of your expenses and your costs. And so you do that by looking at profitability, which means how much money do you get to keep versus how much money you have uh, brought in from customers. Um, you, you would look at different types of profit or different areas in the balance sheet where you're keeping money. For example, Gross profit margin would be your gross profit divided by your revenue. How much of the money that comes in from customers, that is revenue, you get to keep for gross profit, which is the amount that you can spend on running your company, um, paying for your expenses, paying for your rents and all that sort of thing. Um, you also can look at operating profit, which is the amount of profit after you've paid for things like lease costs and employee costs and that sort of thing. Uh, but before you've paid for customers. Um, and then, of course, you have your just net profit margin, which is after you've paid the government and you know taxes and you've paid for interest rates, different kinds of profitability. We'll talk about them a little more specifically. But to get to these, you can also look at how much money you're spending on various items. These are expense to revenue ratios, like how much of every dollar that comes in from customers are you spending on, for example, marketing and sales or for administration, accounting, for example, how much of every dollar is being spent. Those are expense to revenue ratios, also important numbers to consider. But we'll talk about some of these in more detail. The profit margin, net profit margin, or what's generally shortened to profit margin, is your net income. That is how much you actually get to keep as a shareholder, as an owner, of all the money that comes in the door. So it's net income, that's net earnings, divided by sales. You can see in this ratio here, you, the example that we're looking at, $1,245, thousands of dollars. Uh, so it's a million two forty-five, dollars for example. But you have 11 million coming in as revenue. So that means that of, that, of the revenue coming in the door, you get to keep 10.65%. This is an example, might be Starbucks. That for every dollar in sales, you get to keep about 11 cents. That's the amount that goes to the owners. This is not an unusual margin. You can look at other companies and see what their profit margin is as well. Another way to think about the profit is to say, okay, how much profit am I getting when I compare it to the total assets that I have on my balance sheet? I have equipment. I have receivables. I have cash. I have all of this these assets that are operating on the business, for every amount, every dollar of assets that I have, how much income am I getting? How much, how much return or profit do I get from having all of this capital put to work in my assets? In that case, you take your net income, you divide that by your total assets, in this case, 
seven, seven million, if we're using millions, $360,000, or 16.92% of all the assets you have in place, you get returns that amount to seven, almost 17%, every 17 cents on the dollar, if for all the assets you have in place. It means that your, your assets that you have, they're sitting there, you could be putting them into other uses, but you are getting a 17% return effectively on all the assets you have put into place. Now, to buy those assets, to put them to work effectively, you're typically um, borrowing some money, which is liabilities, and you have some that you own, which is your equity. Once you take away the debt, the liabilities, you say, how much return am I getting from the net income with respect to the amount of equity I have. Remember, net income, you've already taken out the interest, you've already paid your liabilities, your, your, uh, debt, uh, your, your debtors, you've already paid them, uh, your debt providers, you've already paid them. So now how much of what's left in net income is for the people that just own the business? So that's a smaller number because if you remember, assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. So when you take away the liabilities, you realize that you have only $4,385,000 in equity. And so in that particular case, your return on equity would be 28%. That's how much you would be looking at, um, at that, those kinds of dollars, okay? Um, this shows you the kinds of returns, and we're using this as an example of maybe a Starbucks store or something like that, but it could also be the entire Starbucks organization and in which case we'd be talking in billions of dollars, but it's the same basic principle of how much you have, you own of a, of a stock and then what profit you get from that. That's a really high number when you think about if you as an individual, you put money in a bank, you're lucky if you get these days 2%, but here investing in equity, you're getting 28.39%. And aside, um, because of the accounting things going on and the way things are accounted for, it's not necessarily an exact number of what your real returns are because not all the numbers that are on the balance sheet reflect market values. So that's, uh, there is some disparity, but you do know this is what you put into place or what was paid for um, at the time. And you're earning, in this particular example, about 28% on the dollar. So those are your profitability numbers. You can also look at gross profit per dollar. You can look at gross profit per assets. You can look at all of these various numbers to help you understand how well you're doing in terms of generating value for, your, for, your, uh, for yourself and your other owners. How well are assets being put to work in, another, in, in, in the context of um, operations efficiency? That's another way to think about the problem. So next we step into and talk about analyzing the financial statements by look at how well your assets are being utilized or what are called asset utilization ratios. These are ratios that measure how well you're using, uh, you're making use of from an operating perspective, um, how, much you, how much you're using your assets, how well you're generating them efficiently, you're using them to generate every dollar's worth of sales. Man, you usually use those to figure out where you might be able to improve, how you might be able to improve your profitability. Um, things like how fast are you turning over your accounts receivable, which are the customer debts to you, how fast you're turning over inventory. You don't want old inventory to be on the shelves. If you're a, a retail store right now, you're, it's springtime, you don't want winter things on your shelves. You don't even really want spring things on your shelves because people are starting to think about summer for purchasing their clothing. So you need to figure out how, you, how fast you can turn these, re these different um, assets over, and that's your asset utilization. Usually the term that's used, there are other ways to talk about this, receivable days, how many days of receivables you have at any point in time, or days of inventory. Um, but in general, you might think about how fast your receivables get turned over, meaning when you divide your total sales, your net revenue, that's sales that come in the door, um, when you divide those by revenue, how much, I mean, excuse me, by your receivable, the asset that you're worrying about, how many times larger are your sales than your receivables or your inventories or whatever? Um, that's how you can tell how often over the course of a year, if you have a year's worth of sales, how often you've paid off your receivables, how fast that whole process is working since receivables are 
um, many businesses sell with with um, by uh, by loaning their customers uh, the capital to pay, and then they pay over time. So receivables turnover in this case is net is total net revenue divided by your receivables, and that's eleven. Um, in this particular case, sales was eleven seven, as we remember, and your receivables were three eighty six. So that means you turn over your your sales about thirty times a year. So that's uh, with twelve months in a year. That's probably every half uh, every couple of weeks you're turning over your inventory. What's in what the trucks bring in and you put on your shelves is all being sold on average uh, within a couple of weeks. Uh, that's a pretty uh, pretty solid uh, turnover time. Um, one of the big advantages of computer systems and the like is that asset turnover, uh, receivables turnover, I'm sorry, we're talking about receivables, um, that's pretty fast collection process, collection time, um, largely probably because um, many, many of the sales in this particular case are uh, from receivables or from cash. Um, there's also then the receivables turnover, which I kind of was hinting at or talking about a little bit earlier which is that whenever you have things that are put on your shelf and you're, um, you're trying to sell off your inventories, you, um, you'll find yourself, how, when a truck brings in, comes in and brings equipment into your store, how fast does that all get sold off before you go for the next time? Um, again, that's 11.7. And uh, you're talking about, in this case, inventory is about $965,000 um, if we're talking about in the millions. So you're turning over your inventory every 12, 12 times a year, which is about every 30 days, about once a month, you're turning over your inventory. So that's um, um, another way to be thinking about uh, asset, how, how fast you're turning over this particular asset, how stale your assets are um, on the balance sheet. Total asset turnover, again, same basic principle. You have all of these various kinds of assets um, in this particular particular case, it's $7.3 million, 3.6 uh, sales divided by assets. How much revenue comes in the door that allows you to essentially replace or, or, um, um, or make use of, utilize your assets over the course of the year? In this particular case, the calculation is 1.6, roughly. Um, their sales, sales of their business is 1.6 times their assets. So more assets than they have, they're able to generate in terms of revenue. Of course, you have all your expenses, so you also have to be thinking about how much you get to keep as profit, and that's what we talked about last time. But here you see a business that doesn't have too many assets. They haven't, they haven't dumped too much into their, um, their asset base. They're in a, a pretty solid situation. Okay, so these are the, um, the ideas of how effectively, how efficiently you are using the capital that has been put into your business, which shows up in terms of assets that are available. The next 